So how cheap are Chinese? Well, I'm going to start this video off by telling you the truth about something in my family. Since I've met my wife Wei Fong, uh, I've never been able to get a store-bought haircut. Yes, that's why Gui Lao's hair looks like it does, is because my wife cuts my hair. Well, not all the time. When I'm in Nanang, uh, I go to the 10 RMB uh, barber in the train station area of the city. And uh, it's just a little booth and they'll cut your hair for like two Canadian dollars. So unless I get a $2 haircut in Nanang, my wife cuts my hair. She says, you're not going to spend $20 on a haircut. Well, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's how cheap Chinese are. It's not so bad for me because Wei Feng can actually cut hair, but my friend Tony, yes, Tony in Calgary, and I know he watches my videos and he's going to be pissed off. He used to work for the, 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 the police in Prince Albert as their IT guy, and his wife Suki cut his hair, and Tony's a really nice guy because I would go to work with, you know, it was, yes, it was, it was probably the worst haircut I've ever seen in my life, but he sucked it up and uh, he went to work like that. And it was, uh, it was quite hilarious. We, she, Suki actually took pictures of the haircut and uh, put it on her WeChat so everybody knew about Tony's new haircut. So, so uh, that's how cheap Chinese can be. How cheap are Chinese? Well, I've got the perfect story. Uh, Tongo, he's a cousin out of Bobai. And if I, I ever want to talk about uh, how Chinese are, he's the, the typical Chinese farmer. Uh, they, they don't vary too, too far from this. He came from Bobai to, uh, to Nanang one day, or one night, and uh, he's coming to our place. He, uh, he took the bus from Bobai to, uh, to Nanang. And he got there at 3 o'clock in the morning. He took the, the cheap one, yeah, the night run. And uh, the buses in Nanang weren't running yet until 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. And uh, so he, there was a cab there, and the cab ride would have been 30 RMB. Okay, so about six bucks. And Tongo wouldn't take a taxi to our place for 30 RMB. What he did is he waited at the, at the bus depot until 6.30 in the morning when the buses started to run again so he could uh, spend one or two RMB depending on which bus he got on instead of paying 30 RMB. So rather than spending 30 RMB, he sat there for three hours waiting for the city buses to start running. That's how cheap Chinese can be. The more we walk around uh, Nanaimo in the parks in Nanaimo, the more we see this is an area of Bone Park that I didn't know existed. It's uh, it's uh, got ducks and it's got lots of water and the stream going through it and stuff. It's, it's pretty nice. Anyway, back to back to how cheap Chinese can be. Uh, in in Nanang, Wei Fong's dad, he was cleaning the bathroom and he broke the toilet. Okay, and uh, the toilet is like a a hole, a porcelain hole in the floor. But he he I don't know how he broke it, but uh, in his cleaning he did and what did he do you know he didn't change the 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 the, the blue sea the toilet uh, what he did was he nailed a piece of aluminum so that the water would shoot down instead of up and it sat like that for I don't know six months until we got there and then I had to go and change the toilet but we gave the money to a Chinese guy and said Okay, it's going to cost this much to change a toilet. Yes. So what he did is he put the cheapest toilet in, and now it doesn't work. So now you got to flush it with a with a pail, and it's been like that for a couple of years. So this is how cheap Chinese can be. It's not so much that they're cheap; it's it's that they're savers. Uh, Chinese people are are different than than the Western people in that they they, they get a dollar, they save a dollar. Uh, remember coming back from China? Oh, I don't know six, seven, eight years ago, let's say. Or maybe it was even longer now, about 10 years ago. And uh, I noticed Wei Fong had $20 in her pocket, a 20, fresh Canadian $20 bill. 
Well, six months later, Wei Feng still had that fresh Canadian $20 bill in her pocket. So she hadn't spent one penny. Not that uh, she hadn't spent any money, but all of the money was coming out of my pocket. She wasn't going to spend her money because that's her money and she's saving it for... I don't know what she's saving it for, but uh, the idea that uh, if that was given to a Canadian wife, that 20 bucks would be at Starbucks in a matter of a day or two. You know, it's just one of those things that um, they look at it differently. I think it's because uh, the Chinese came from a, a poor background, or the ones that did come from a poor background, like Wei Fong, and uh, I made a video about that. Uh, they know the value of a dollar or an RMB, and uh, if they don't have to spend it, they're not going to, which is uh, which is a good thing. It's a it's a nice trait to have in a way, eh? Uh, somebody that uh, she won't go to the store and buy a regular price item. She always hits the sales, and because I get more if I, you know, and Winners has these sales twice a year, and third week in August and the third week in February, you know, around, and they just about zero everything down to like a buck or two or five dollars and uh, I've been known to go in there and pick up a lot of t-shirts and, and, and stuff like that but Wei Fong she'll come out of there with literally well, she's wearing something today that she bought at Winners five or six years ago and it still had the price tag on it because she hadn't used it yet well that's the you can buy thousands of dollars worth of uh, stuff for 150 bucks if you do it right and you see, you see the same thing in, in Filipino, uh, in Prince Albert, the Filipinos in, uh, in, in Prince Albert, they do the same shopping at, at Winners like, like Wei Fong did. So, so it's not just Chinese, it's maybe people from poor countries uh, that know the value of a dollar. That's not saying that uh, Chinese don't spend money because when they, when they spend money, they like to buy the best that they can. Uh, you see Chinese driving around in BMWs and Mercedes Benzes and stuff like that. Well, yeah, they can they can do that because they are savers. And uh, when it's time to actually buy something, oh yes, you can bet your bottom dollar that they're going to buy the best that they can get. And uh, and it's uh, a lot of that is for face. You know, uh, the Chinese are big on face. If I'm driving a Mercedes Benz or a, a 700 series BMW, well, it. Uh, it, it makes them look better in the eyes of the other Chinese. Oh, that's the guy with the, the Mercedes-Benz, you know what I mean? You know, they uh, they buy the nicest houses. You can see that a lot in, in Canada where, you know, the Chinese people are in million-dollar houses. That's because they just don't go out and spend all their money on beer and wine and stuff like some Canadians that you know. Yeah, me. Exactly. So, uh, I'm driving a Hyundai. Yeah, but it's a good car. But uh, the idea of spending all that money on a BMW or a, or a Benz, no, no, no. I'd rather have the little things in life. Where the Chinese, they, they scrimp on the little things in life so they can have the big things in life. When you're used to, to living off, you know, $50 Canadian per month for a family of four, like, like Wei Fong's family was when I, when I met her back in, a long time ago and, and uh, maybe that was enough to, to live in China at that time but uh, not very well I tell you. I'm gonna do a video when we go back to Nanang I'm gonna do a video of Boilu where Wei Fong grew up and you'll see uh, how rough she actually had it but when you when you're uh, when you're brought up poor and uh, and you don't just go and spend your money on just anything you can you can uh, actually live off hardly anything in a, in a place like China back then. Now it's a little bit different. You'd need $60 a month. No, you'd need a lot more than that. But, uh, you know, they lived in their own in their own house, apartment house type thing. So so that, uh, you know, they're, they're buying uh, vegetables, rice, and, and meat, and that's pretty well it. Oh, there's one thing that uh, Wei Fong doesn't script on, and oh, two things, purses and shoes. Uh, she's like Imelda Marcos of China. She loves her shoes. So she's got, I don't know how many pairs of shoes. Uh, but that, I think that comes from uh, not having when she was younger. So now that she's older, she's got uh, older. Well, I hope she doesn't watch this video. And uh, she's, got, uh, she's got cash to burn. 
she can uh, she can go out and splurge on things like that. That's that's a good thing. So yeah, she's got lots of shoes. Uh, Wei Bang says uh, I'm she 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 married a Chinese, meaning me, or more Chinese than Chinese because I'm a saver too. Uh, when I was younger, I I didn't have any money. I was I was basically poor poor white boy from Prince Albert Saskatchewan, and uh, you know so I'm a saver also and. Uh, so I fit in with the Chinese community a lot better than somebody that uh, that would spend like crazy. And a lot of the Westerners that are attracted to China, I notice like Dave is is a, is a saver too. He doesn't uh, he doesn't uh, just go out and spend his money like uh, like crazy. He's uh, he's pretty frugal. Uh, and a lot of the other older guys in in China, whether it's because they don't have a lot of money, they're on a pension. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe it rubs off from the Chinese community onto onto the foreigner community in in China that uh, live frugally because uh, you never know when you're going to need a wad of cash for something. I think that it has a lot to do with when you get sick in China, as as we found out, uh, it costs a whack of cash to in Chinese money and Canadian money. It's not that much, but if you get sick. You, you have to pay for it yourself. Uh, they do have a, an insurance policy on for a government run that the old boy, Wei Fong's dad, he pays, pays 125 RMB a year for insurance. And if he ends up in the hospital, it pays 60% of his, his insurance bill. You know, so uh, he makes sure that that's topped up every year. But if you get, say, cancer or uh, Wei Feng's brother, he fell off his motorcycle and broke his arm. 6,000 RMB. Wow, 6,000 RMB is a whack of cash for a, for a Chinese person working, you know, a couple thousand RMB a month. And that's now a couple thousand RMB a month is a, a working wage in, in Nanning City. I know that Dung Dung, uh, sister-in-law, she makes about 3,000 RMB a month. Uh, but she's been working at the same place for a long time. So you know, keep that in mind when uh, uh, Chinese are being frugal. Uh, it's because they're they're saving for a rainy day, and in China there's always going to be a rainy day for you or a family member. Like Lugo, just uh, his wife passed away. I had a did a, a video about that here not too long ago. Well, the whole community gave him cash. So you've got to have money for things like that too. And the Chinese know that. We've all seen uh, the Chinese lady or, or guy leaving the grocery store. And they're always looking at their, their, their bill that they got, their invoice or their, their you know what I mean. And uh, they're checking to make sure that they haven't been overcharged on anything. And I know my wife does this too. You know, she buys something on, on sale. <laughs> yeah, at the grocery store too. And uh, she'll watch when they ring it in and make sure she gets her, her 30 cents off or 67 cents off or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ingrained in them. In China, uh, you, go, you go to a, a restaurant, dim sum in the morning, doesn't make any difference. You go to a restaurant and uh, when they bring you your, your bill, uh, every Chinese person looks at it and goes over everything and, and questions the waitress about the stuff on the bill and if it's not right uh, a lot of times they'll charge you uh, two RMB for a little package of tissue paper to wipe your mouth or whatever and they always leave it on the, the, the table and if you don't use it you don't have to pay for it but it's always on the bill so every time we never use it because Wei Fong, everybody brings their own. Well, we do anyway, because I'm cheap, Wei Fong's cheap. How cheap are Chinese? And every time Wei Fong sees this, she says, take this off our bill because we didn't use it. We don't want that. You know, it's, 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 it's things like that that I notice uh, about, about China that, oh, and you go into a restaurant, and I did this when I, when I started. I tried tipping a waitress. Well, you don't tip. There's no tipping in China. There's, it, it, I, it was like I slapped her face. Uh, I don't need your money. I have a job. So I, I like it better going to restaurants in China because I'm cheap. 
when I go to a restaurant here, well, you buy your meal and it's overpriced to begin with. It's not very good food. And uh, at the end, when the waitress wants 10 or 15 percent of the price of the whole meal, uh, we stop and here we go. We stop in uh, what was it? Chase, BC, uh, on our way to, to Nanaimo from Saskatchewan one year. And nice little community, and there was a Chinese restaurant there. And uh, we went in there, and it was run by a mom pop operation, Chinese mom and pop operation. And we ate, and we were going to leave because we we're used to a Chinese place, no tip. It's for the waitress, not the owner. And the owner lady of the restaurant says, You're supposed to pay a 15% tip. And I thought to myself, Okay, I'll pay the 15% percent tip but I'll never eat in this restaurant again uh, you know so, so not only are they cheap but they want to be uh, they want to get the most that they can for the work that they do as, as everybody else does but that's sort of a rotten way to do it especially in a Chinese restaurant in Canada uh, you'd never see that in in China Nice place I found here, eh? Little waterfall in the background. There's ducks and there's fish and there's yeah, it's, it's cool. Oh, and God forbid, you big beer drinker and and cans and and stuff. Bottles not so much. The cans. Uh, if I threw the cans away, Wei Feng's dad would be all over me like shit in a blanket. Uh, you you get money for that, and they're always recycling. Uh, all of the Chinese, the older ones especially. Uh, they, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, they recycle it. But it's different than recycling here. Like, we'll give it to the Sally Ann or a thrift store or whatever, and then they sell it and make whatever off of it. It's uh, donations, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, in China, it's not like that. You got, like, a Lugo, they ding, 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 and they ride their bike with a little, a truck bike. If you've been in China, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. And uh, these are the recycle people. And uh, they ding, 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 so you know to bring out your cardboard or your, your beer cans and whatever. And you don't give it to them. They actually buy it off you. And they know the approximate price and the weight and whatever. So they'll, they'll pay you a percentage of what they're going to sell it to the recycling place for. Uh, so Chinese are so cheap that they won't even give away their cardboard. Yes, in, in China. They expect to get paid for it. Or say you have a, an old fridge that's pooched. Well, it's still worth something for it to the aluminum recycle or whatever, uh, the copper line in it, uh, the, the compressor. All of this stuff is worth money in China. So they're not going to give that away. They're not going to say, I bought a new fridge, can you take the old one away? No, no. Leave the old one here. I'll sell it to the recycle guy. Yeah, so that's... Uh, so that's how cheap Chinese are. I'm telling you, uh, you, nothing goes to waste there. It's it's the way it is. Uh, the refuse from the wet market, uh, the the garbage that the the brown stuff on the outside of your lettuce or tomatoes that have gone rotten or fruit that's gone rotten. They they collect all of this stuff and uh, they sell it to pig farmers to feed their pigs. Yes, soup kitchen where you leave a little bit of soup in the bottom, it all goes into a pail. And they sell that to pig farmers to feed pigs. So it's, it's, it's like recycle heaven. Uh, any tree hugging hippie from Vancouver Island would love the way the Chinese recycle everything. It's, it's one of those things that uh, you look at it and say, well, why can't we do that in Canada? Well, I don't know. It, it, maybe it, we're not that cheap. One thing that you uh, don't see in China is going Dutch. Like the Dutch have nothing over the Chinese. Say 10 people go for dim sum, 10 friends go for dim sum in the morning. The, the rich guy's not gonna, unless he's a foreign, isn't, isn't, isn't gonna pay for the whole shot. Yes, they cut her up into 10 different things and everybody uh, pays their little share type thing. So there's, there's a, they should call it going Chinese. So, so uh, another thing that I notice with uh, Wei Fong's dad, he's like 82 years old, 
he's got shirts that have more holes in it than any shirt I've ever seen. Like he's not gonna throw that away. Uh, he's like around the neck. There's big, there's big holes. But no, he keeps wearing it. Why? Because he's too cheap to go buy a t-shirt. If somebody else, oh, hey, here's one. So I buy, uh, you know, the the nice 501 Levi red tag uh, uh, button fly jeans, eh? And uh, we come back to Canada every once in a while. And these things are like 75, 80 bucks a pop. So that's, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at about 400 RMB for a pair of pants. Well, I come back to Nanning one day and here the old boy had grabbed a pair of my jeans and cut them off so they would fit him because he's about the same around the waist as me. So the old boy was uh, wearing a 400 RMB pair of jeans. Too cheap to go buy himself a pair of pants, eh? But this is the way it is. That's another video from Grey Laws Takes You. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button, and thanks for watching. Bye now.